everybody, welcome back to another Three Question Thursday. <laughs> da -da -da. Yeah! I figured you'd <laughs> say something it. after that. I like somebody do it. <laughs> All right, so um, first question of the day is from Marian Mark Mel Meltzer. Hello. And uh, thank you, Marian. So when you salvage an item, are you already picturing something to transform it into? Or is it something that comes later when it's been in the shop for a while? And which do you enjoy more? On the road salvage or inventing something new out of pieces at the shop? Ooh, that's, that's a good one. Yeah, um, I think it's a little bit of both. Yeah. You know, sometimes we're out in the field and you see something immediately, especially with Mike. He's like, that's going to be this. Yeah, and that sometimes turns into a reason why we, we want to take, take it. Because it. it's, you know, it, on a surface value, it's like, it's right. just this. Right. But then, as you, you know, as we've been doing this for a long time, so you see it in a piece of furniture that we know we can sell for a lot more money, that yeah. piece becomes a lot more desirable. Mm -hmm. you know? Like corbels are a good example, like brackets, you know, like little wooden, you know, decorative, called corbels, but brackets, 90 degree sort of shelf, holdy up mm -hmm. deals. <laughs> Excuse the layman's terms. But well, that's perfect. That can apply, I mean, there's hundreds of other things that have that same kind of flow. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, the answer is both. I mean, sometimes we get the idea in the field, mm -hmm. or it's it really is just something we've been tripping over in the shop for months. And we're like, and we're we like, gotta do something. We have got to build something out of this. Yeah. To... Which do we enjoy more? Uh, on the road salvage or inventing something new out of pieces in the shop? You go. Um, Which do you like more? I love do being down the shop and working, because for me, that I don't get to do that very often, so we it's always special. You. So I have to say, I really love that. Um, but of course, I love doing all of, you know, the salvage jobs and being in the field. Um, yeah, I mean, what's so fun about being in the field is it's always going to be something different. We're always learning something and it's always a challenge sure. and it's like, it's just really exciting, all that energy, yeah. um, problem solving stuff. Yeah. If I had to pick favorites, it would probably be building stuff in the shop. I mean, that's where my heart lies, you know, custom fabrication and doing it for years. Yeah. And um, with or without Black Dog, I'd be doing something like that, you know, probably with cars. but. It's that same thing, building something with my, my hands, you know, so that's my favorite part, but I, I love all the parts equally. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's mm -hmm. awesome. This is a fun question. So this is kind of like a little bit outside of work. Uh, from Stephen Welch mm -hmm. uh, asks, what we like to do outside of work at Black Dog Salvage. Are you avid readers? What kind of books, uh, favorite authors, et cetera, et cetera. So what do you like to do outside of work, Tay? I don't read books. So, yeah. <laughs> I don't manuals, read much. Car manuals yeah. and, yeah. I read instruction <laughs> manuals and uh, electrical schematics. Um, I, if I'm not working, I'm typically working. Um, I do a lot of custom car fabrication. I race cars um, and working on my house now. But when that's done, I'll go right back to cars. Yeah. That's, that's my passion for real. And um, there's a lot to do in my personal garage. There's always like four projects going on at once because sure. I get that from my dad for sure it's like mm -hmm. you can't just start and finish something you have to start four things and when the finish inspiration hits and most then, of them yeah <laughs> <laughs> the inspiration hits the ADD hits yeah, yeah. I'll follow, well, I see some on YouTube and it's like oh god I gotta finish my car and I'll yeah. get back out there and work on it what do you yeah. do yeah I like to um, I like a lot of outdoor activities I'm loving um, you know all season hiking biking uh, kayaking yeah. paddle boarding Go um, on and I got on. a we dog taking my dog out. I do love reading, um, and when I read, I usually try to read something that I feel like is going to be like, like I try to stay away from novels. Those are like you know my maybe like in between books when I'm like needing something easy to read or something. But like I like to read something that's going to um, teach me something. You know, not that we can't learn from novels. Love doing crossword puzzles as well. Um, yeah. Yeah. But no, we live in a great place to, to be outside mm -hmm. all the time. Yeah. Before I could drive, that's what I was doing. Was yeah. Climbing trees and digging yeah. holes. Okay, uh, so that was fun. Yeah, that's it for this week. Thank you guys for joining us, and we'll see you next time. <laughs> I think we only did two. That was three. Mm, oh, wait, nope. Nope, we only did two. All right, next one is from Kimberly Age, and she asked, I enjoy and respect what you all do. Thanks. Louisville, Kentucky has a lot of old empty buildings and you should look into them. I agree. There's a lot of whiskey factories in, mm. in Kentucky. Mm. My question is, what is the best way to remove old baseboards without chipping the wood? <laughs> Thanks, Kim. Kim, we're still learning. Yeah, uh, we, we'll, we'll get back to you on that one. <laughs> I think um, figuring out, one, if it's going to be uh, 
well, what are you, what kind of wood are you working with? Um, you know, if there's going to be water damage or if it's been in a lot of sun, it's going to be brittle. Right. Um, a, lo a lot of times baseboard has a little bit of, depending on the year of the house or, you know, how nice it was, um, they'll have like a little quarter round. Um, Top trim. Top trim, yeah. bottom trim. So there's sometimes baseboard, when you're looking at it, it looks like all in one piece and you take it apart and it's like the, all these pieces start falling apart. Yeah. Um, and then yeah. you have to question, is this worth saving? Uh, yeah, I mean, the two main factors are what kind of wood it is like oak is really hard can be brittle though um, and poplar is really soft and there's a lot of poplar in old American right so you can dip that pretty easily yeah as Robert yeah. said a uh, pair of heels heels will do a job on it early the season one trivia right there mm. um, but the other part is what kind of tool you're using yeah um, so what would you suggest for this I was thinking um, something what you need for baseboard is something that's really wide and long so you get leverage but something right. that's big and flat that'll get down in behind it we have this tool called a demo hog that yeah. has a oh, great awesome. one end is like these big forks yeah these big tines that you can kind of if with good aim <laughs> yeah. hit it behind above the baseboard try to get it between it and the wall yeah and then as you kind of wiggle it you start to loosen up the nails start at one end work your way to the other or right. start at both ends and work towards the middle you don't want to start in the middle and bow it you'll probably break it right don't try to pry the whole board off at one spot sure there's Sometimes. so many variables though. I mean, it could be a house where the carpenter just had a million nails and he had to get rid of all of them. Paid per nail. <laughs> and sometimes, you know, you just, they, they're built differently. I mean, in the era of houses that we work on, I mean, it's, it's so regional and different no yeah. matter where you go. That sure. You really, it's hard to put a blanket mm -hmm. how to on that, but yeah for um, sure you break enough of them you'll figure out exactly how and to if do you it. don't have this um, we're calling it a demo hog it's a it's based on a tool that firefighters call around called a halligan bar call around carry around but it's cut it was the firefighter version of that is called a halligan bar that's a cool halligan tool and the only difference is the firefighters one has a big spike on it that you can break doors down with yeah okay but i have to imagine whoever made the demo hog took that for inspiration yeah that's really the, cool the end is exactly like that but yeah so if you need it to feel more badass problem. you can know that firefighters use this tool too. yeah it's a demo hog it's yeah. the only neon green one go find it <laughs> it's pretty awesome it's good yeah. made in america we also have like um channel lock or crescent yeah, they make one as well that's got, um, uh, find the word for me. Indexable. Thank you, head. So for, if you're working on something at eye level or down the floor like baseboard, you know, you can, you can yeah, use the same tool for the same big, job, like, save your back. Time. Yeah. There's a lot of great tools out there. Right tool for the right job. There's always one. <laughs> that's a life lesson. <laughs> <laughs> use the right tool for the right job. Um, well, cool. Thank you guys for the question Woo! for this week. Another yeah. week done. I'm spent. I'm going to get some water. I'm going to get beer. <laughs> that sounds better. Beer, water. <laughs> it's all hydration, right? Join us next week for another Three Question Thursday.